Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so I wanted to discuss the man over my left shoulder right there, that man right there, Robert Garcia, Boxing Academy's very own, Raymond Murataya. You know, he had, a, he had to me what was the most intriguing matchup of this past weekend in a, in a weekend that featured so many, so much boxing. I mean, Jesus, there was a lot of boxing on this week. But um, he took on Diego Torres, right? And that was a fight that on paper looked to be, you know, really, really interesting because Diego Torres had, had built up a nice knockout record out in Mexico. Uh, Xanifer Promotions built him up real nicely. Um, and Murataya, we know, also punches very hard and has some skills. And it was going to be someone that you would think would, would be able to bring some heat to Ray Murataya. And I got to be honest with you guys, you know, Ray Murataya, he's not, he's not like a lot of fighters in the lightweight division. You know, he's not one to, to do a whole lot of talking. So maybe he doesn't get the headlines as much. But I'll tell you this, man. He let his hands do the talking in a major way this past weekend because he really, really, and truthfully showed an amazing um, blend of boxing skills, boxing IQ, distance control, counter punching, slugging, body punching. Mean, he was he looked like a, a complete fighter this weekend against Diego Torres because this is the second fight in a row. I mean, he, he just fought his last fight back in uh, May. He fought Jeremiah Nakatilia who we all know has a big reputation for being a big puncher, blasted him out of there in two rounds, okay? He took a puncher and reduced him to nothing. Came back again against a younger, fresher puncher in Torres, and I actually was more impressed with this performance than I was the, um, the Nakatilia fight because it went some rounds. Uh, Torres, he made Torres, who's a known. If, you know, if, if you've watched Diego Torres at all, you guys know he's an aggressive front foot, you know, high volume Mexican uh, pressure fighter who throws a lot of punches and he punches with bad intentions. And round by round, I just saw Raymond Murataya reduce him to a nothing fighter and make him put his hands in his pocket. The punch I put dipped. I saw him controlling that distance with the lead hand. I saw him countering. I saw him thinking. I saw him fighting. I saw him. I saw a complete lightweight, right? So now a lot of people are looking at Raymond Murataya as someone that, you know, is, is going to be a big factor in light, lightweight division. Timothy Bradley, good, you know, good friend of the channel. We got a lot of love for Timothy Bradley. Got to get him back on here soon. Uh, he stated that he thinks Raymond Murataya would defeat Keyshawn Davis, right? And, and, and those are big words because, you know, Keyshawn Davis has gotten a lot of hype in boxing. Um, to be fair to Keyshawn, you know, <clears throat> Murataya has 19 fights in the pro ranks. Keyshawn has nine. So he has a little more than double the fights Keyshawn has. But at the same time, Keyshawn was a, an Olympic silver medalist. And, you know, when you look at some of the guys, some of the bodies that Keyshawn has fought in the pro ranks so far, he's fought, you know, good veteran fighters like Juan Carlos Burgos, Anthony Yigit, and uh, most recently, his tough fight against Nahir Albright. So I, don't, I, I really don't think that Murataya versus Keyshawn Davis is a fight that needs too much marination. I feel like, you know, Keyshawn, you get Keyshawn maybe a fight or two more, and I'm thinking by this time next year, by Keyshawn's like... 12 or 13 pro fight. I think he's good enough and I think he has enough pro experience to be able to step in the ring with a guy like Raymond Murataya. You know, and I will top rank do that. I would probably say more likely not, but that's a great fight. I think that's a fight that we need to see in, in, in boxing is uh, Raymond Murataya versus Keyshawn Davis because, you know, when you look at the rankings, right? And I always, I always look at the rankings to kind of see what fights are realistic and what fights aren't. I know Keyshawn's not going to fight Devin. He's not going to fight Shakur because they're best friends. Uh, I don't foresee him fighting a Floyd Schofield. But I think, you know, you, you, you could match Keyshawn Davis with a guy like uh, Jermaine Ortiz or George Cambosis Jr. And if you could pass a test like that, then boom, you can make a great little fight with um, him and Ren Murataya. And, and right now, as it stands, you know, you look at the WBC rankings. Murataya is ranked number nine. Keyshawn's ranked 12. You look at the WBA rankings. Uh, Keyshawn's ranked number seven. Murataya's not ranked there. You look at the IBF rankings. Uh, Murataya is ranked 11, and Keyshawn's not ranked there. And then you look at uh, the... So yeah, really it's just WBC. Keyshawn's really only ranked in WBC, but they're right, they're right there, neck and neck. And I just, I don't see why that can't be a good fight. Keyshawn Davis, I think, has a, a great boxing IQ. He's got the ability to outfight the boxers. He's got the ability to, 
you know, outbox the pressure fighters. He's a, he's a good, versatile fighter. My only issue with Keyshawn Davis and my biggest red flag I've seen with him so far is the fact that, you know, maybe his punching power um, isn't quite what it needs to be um, to be his best. I know power is not everything, but when you fight a guy like Raymond Murataya who can punch and can box and is very educated with how he sets things up and has, has a really good gas tank, you are going to need some firepower to keep him off and keep him honest. And I just, if they were to fight, whether Keyshawn gets more experience or not, that would always be my biggest concern with him. And it's not like Keyshawn Davis is young. He's not like 20 or 19. Keyshawn Davis is 24. So he's already, his body's already matured. He's already, he's already gotten some of that man strength, so to speak. So I, I kind of feel like when it comes to the punching power department, he kind of just... He kind of is what he is. You know, he's gonna have to work with what he's got, and um, I would love the fight. You know, Murataya definitely captured my attention when he fought Nakatilia, and and he's definitely increased my attention with what he did to Diego Torres. Because I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you this: Diego Torres is no, he's no like a level fighter, but a guy like him, it's it's very hard to neutralize a guy like that and then box him the way Baron Murataya did. You know, box him, be educated, stand the pocket. You know, faint him, use that lead hand probe, and then get the stoppage. I mean, he did, he ticked every last box you could have asked for in the Diego Torres fight. So, um, I love what I'm seeing from him retire. And truth be told, I got to make a better effort to cover him more because he's earned, he's earned more videos here on True School Sports. He's earned more coverage. So, shout out to Raymond Murataya. In my opinion, the standout performance of the week was Raymond Murataya in, in what was looked to be, on paper at least, a very intriguing fight. Um, Diego Torres, I think uh, he's just not on that level of Murataya, but I still want to see Diego Torres in some good fights. You know, he's a, he's a fun TV fighter, being some good action fights. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing him against like someone with less boxing skills who could probably trade a bit more. That that'd be better. Like maybe in the future, Isak Cruz versus Diego Torres would be an amazing fight just because of the styles they bring. That'd be a good Mexican versus Mexican fight. But nonetheless, that's my thoughts on Murataya, his performance against Diego Torres, and just um. All this talk about him and Keyshawn Davis. I think, listen, I think I'd probably favor him to be Keyshawn Davis, to be honest with you. Um, right now, if they fought, uh, Keyshawn, I, I just don't know if he's going to have that power to keep him honest. And and I think Raymond Murata has enough boxing skills to offset some of the things Keyshawn Davis does do. But it's a it's a great fight for, for 135, and I hope um, we can get it in 2024 around this time next year. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What did you make of Raymond Murata versus Diego Torres? What do you guys think about him versus Keyshawn Davis? Who do you favor and why? You know, leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a gift from Daniel. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.